Hello and welcome to part 12 of a series where I am building a protogen head. In this part, I will procrastinate even more from finishing the physical portion of the head and instead do some software writing. The goal for today is to use a DMA channel on the microcontroller to drive the OLED display. Currently, it's just using the hardware spy driver for the uh, OLED display, but that has to be done synchronously. If I can set up to use the DMA thing, then the CPU can go off doing other stuff while the data is being sent to the OLED display. I'm already doing that for the LED panels, and I would like to do that for this as well so we can get a higher frame rate. If you look right now, it's running at about 41 frames per second. Uh, you can see it's updating every single frame so the animation is smooth. That's not, as much, that's not as high of a frame rate as I would like. I'd like to get to at least 60. If I set this to 16 uh, frame, frame skip, which I can do if I can hit the buttons uh, by doing it. So now it's set to 16 frame skip. You can see the animation is a lot worse, but it says it's running at about 73, 78, some 70 something frames per second. So that's the external displays are running at 70 whatever frames per second. The internal display is only updating every 16th frame. So that'd be what, like four FPS for the internal display versus 70 whatever for the external. If I get it set up to use DMA for the external dis or for the internal display, I can hopefully get to maybe 60. It's obviously not going to get this high because it still has to calculate what goes to here. But if I can get to 60, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be happy with it. Uh, I haven't done very much coding in an actual update on this for a while or at all, so I figured I'd do that today just to be able to put something out because I'm procrastinating on doing the artsy and craftsy stuff. So let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, before I go any further, I'm going to switch actually to a scratch program to run on this hardware instead of the normal program, simply because this compiles a lot faster because there's less to it, and that will improve the iteration on the iteration time. So if we see we've got different text scrolling on the OLED now, this is, I actually don't remember exactly what this is doing right now, but it doesn't matter. The point is we have text scrolling on the OLED display, so we know that the OLED display is working. And this is using the same kind of spy methodology, methodology that the normal program is using. There's no DMA involved here, but we want to make it do DMA. I have gotten this working with I squared C with DMA earlier in the past, but the I squared C got too unstable, so I had to switch this to spy. So it should be relatively straightforward to do similar modifications to make this work over spy. So let's just dive right into it. So if I come over here to my IDE GoLand, this is the main code over here, and this is my little experiment code over here. So we only really need this. So this is where I'm making the spy, the spy driver for the OLED display right now. And basically, I just need to make a new uh, a DMA version of it like I had done for the I squared C, which I wanted to test again, but this OLED display is in spy mode or I squared C mode, and you have to solder to change it, and I did not want to mess with that. So if we come over here to the driver's repository, we can see that I had have already made changes to this to support it for I squared C, so I basically just have to do similar changes for DMA, uh, for spy. So basically, let's just do that. Basically, just going to need a new struct here. Uh, we don't need an address. We do, however, need DMA descriptor, channel, buffer, and active. Well, basically, we need all of this. So now we just get to the, the point of doing that. And I'm going to need to pull the non DMA version over here for reference. So this is just part of the TinyGo drivers repository uh, where other people have written these drivers for these hardware devices for TinyGo. 
So I'm just taking that and modifying it. And once I get this all cleaned up and tested, I will try to, I will be going back and opening PRs to get this stuff merged into upstream so other people can use this if they wish. But for now, Basically, I just need to make the thing. So I'm just gonna copy that because that's gonna happen exactly the same. Whoops, I didn't specify a type on these. That's important so it knows what the fuck I'm doing with them. Uh, and then I basically need to do about this. Except there is no address for spy, and then I need to make this be that. Uh, make that be that. And this is gonna complain because I don't have stuff implemented on here yet, but I can just do that, and then boom, it makes me the things that I don't have made. And then I can just come on down here, put them down here. Uh, these need to be pointies and rename all to S. There we go. So that should make everything happy up here. I don't think I need a specific buff here. Uh, so we need this. I guess these should just be all named B. So I don't need any of that. Do that. And then do I even need B. I do need B.config. Uh, however, I need slightly different code for the interrupt because the interrupts for spy work differently from the interrupts for uh, I squared C. So I'm going to come back to, I'm going to come over to this code, and this is the code that runs the LED panels. I forked it and made some changes to it for this specific controller, um, and for my use case, and to make it more configurable because previously it only worked for one specific uh, serial controller, CIRCOM, on the board which meant it only worked for a specific set of pins and I wanted it to be flexible. So I made it be flexible. The point is this is where I got a lot of the DMA code from and I had to make changes to the code to work for I2C, but I need to get the original code from SPY. So I'm coming back over here to, got, to get that and then shove it over here. And I think that's the only change. Almost too easy. Why is it so easy? This is this needs change as well. And now it makes sense. So yes, this is a, an interrupt on since we're setting the interrupt on the spy channel itself saying that it's done as opposed to the DMA channel saying that it's done. So that's why it needs to be set from a different path. Okay, so that, other than this, is the majority of the code. 
So I just need to implement that from the rest of this, which should be relatively straightforward. Uh, but I still have to do this. So we need to paste this code in here. Uh, which means that I need to store, I need to store those pins somewhere. That's important. There, I just need these. Boom, I'm just gonna call that wire because everything else is calling that wire. So as part of the configuration on the spy bus, where did it go? Here. So we have to twiddle some bit some bits on the bus for the controller to just get reset basically. And then after we do that, we can come down here to uh basically here. No, here. Where we don't have to do set address. Because there is so much no such thing on a spy device. And that just leaves implementing TX, which should be relatively simple. So we basically do what this does. So I'm just going to copy that paste it here, and now we just have to TX the data in a, in a DMA fashion. So I'm just gonna make a helper funk for that. By DMA bus, TX DMA, data slice byte. Ah, so we want to set CS pin to be high when the, this is complete. We don't need this stuff in here anymore. And then we instead do yeah, TX. DMA, data, data, come on. Well, actually we do that. So really the only thing that matters is are we setting the data, the data slash command pin and then everything else is the same. So we're just gonna do everything else the same. Yeah. Let's put that there. So now we DMA it. Yeah. And then I just have to remember how the hell you do that. So it's basically the code that happens here. And then bit string is the dot buff, no dot. Oh, it's data, but this needs to be, okay, now that I'm thinking about it, this is actually a problem. Because during all of the initialization up here, yeah, so it's sending a bunch of commands So these commands need to all be sent synchronously. So I'm actually just gonna undo a lot of this. Uh, I wanna be back to here. And then where's my TX? Yeah, here we go. So 
Basically, we need to do the same kind of thing here, where if we're, cur if we're already in the middle of a transfer, we don't do anything. We, we wait for that to complete. It sucks because we're wasting CPU time, but we just need to wait for that to complete. So we just loop it while, while it's still going on, we just yield to the go run the go scheduler, so it'll run other go routines if there are any, which there probably won't be very many on this project. And then we just wait for the interrupt to fire. And now we want to mm, We want to send commands synchronously. Is it the CSPN? Yeah, so we set CS back to high after that. Okay, right. I remember now, this has to be a little bit annoying. Yeah. Now, well, I'm just going to grab all of this, come down to here. Oh, what? Just a computer? Oh, God. Uh, Goland is not happy right now. Well, let's try that again and see what happens this time. Hopefully. It's a little less uh, unhappy. So where's the... Yeah, so I want to grab this and shove it in here. Well, while this is going, I can still plan through what I still need to do. I need to uh, point this at the main buffer, which I think means I do need a back reference to the main thing and have my circular reference, which is annoying. But at this point... I don't want to use this data here because this could be on the stack or it could be on the heap. Basic, but the problem is the, the Go compiler won't know when that is no longer needed. So it could get garbage collected and then I'd have a use after free, which is bad. It's probably not as bad on this as it would be on a in general code, but it's still bad. So I need to use a statically allocated buffer somewhere. Then we have one. Okay, so there is no address, so we don't have to set it. I won't need this TX data func anymore. I assume this can return an error. Yeah, so we're just ignoring that error. Is that the... Yeah, that is the correct... Is that it? There's no way that's it. 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 There's no way. Is that supposed to not be a pointer up here? Uh, I guess 
doesn't matter. But there's circum zero. Uh, this is this isn't right though. I need to find this and figure out what that's supposed to be, which. Oops. Did I set it correctly over here? That's not right. That needs to be, I said circum zero. I think that's circum, I think I said circum zero. OLED spy is circum zero. Uh, control F, circum DMAC ID TX, circum five DMAC ID TX, I need circum zero DMAC ID, ah, that's not in here. What's it called? Trigger source. Um, hmm. There's a table of these somewhere. And I don't know where that table is. Here it is, found it. I think. Circum, uh, so zero delta should be circum four DMA, and I need circum zero, so zero X five. So I think I need five, which is then circum zero DMA T ID TX. Let's see what happens. Blink screen as expected because we're programming. Programming is complete. It's booted. It's not trying to configure. Oh, because I didn't change my code. It's just in line here. All right, let's try that again. Okay, compile. So flashing it. Fingers crossed. Eh, start. Uh, still nothing on the screen. Damn. Okay, so what did we do wrong? Good fucking question. This is the hard part. Uh, it's just like, there is no real easy way to debug this. Um, I have a logic analyzer. I can hook into at least some of these signals easily. Actually, I can probably get into all of them relatively easily. Well, I probably have to take this OLED off to get at the signals in the, the correct easy way. So the question is now, why isn't it working? And this is the hard part. This is the really hard part of device driver development because there's just no way of knowing really where the problem lies. So I might end up having to take this off and putting my, um, putting my logic analyzer in there. I guess what I can do is just do a little bit of like quick Spot checking, does the code look relatively sane? But not being able to actually debug the code makes this very difficult. That's, oh God. Why, why is that so slow? So I'm just gonna have it print every time there's an interrupt, which is not good. It's gonna be slow as balls. But that will let us know if at least the DMA controller is finishing its job. And the DMA controller is, as far as it is aware, doing a DMA transfer every single time. So at least we are configuring DMA and it is happening. 
Well, not only are we configuring DMA and it is happening, but the spy controller thinks that it is happening because this is coming from the spy control. This is the interrupt from the spy controller. So the spy controller is like, yep, I sent that. So why aren't we actually sending that? That is a very good question. So now I'm going to have it print the buffer that it's trying to send every time it sends it just to make sure that there is reasonable data in said buffer, which that looks reasonable to me. The zeros are off pixels and the numbers are mean that some pixels are set. Uh, it doesn't look like that's necessarily the same thing every single time, but it's hard to tell just by looking at the data. Okay, that's definitely not the same thing every single time because some of these numbers are different. So this is just a bitmap of the screen. Uh, it's gonna obviously be bullshit to try to process by looking at it, but it means that it is sending data every time, every frame. So now the question is, why is the display not reacting like there is actually data there? Okay, so a bunch of commands that look like they're working. As far as I can tell, the code is trying to send the data out over SPY via DMA, which means I might have to actually hook up my logic analyzer. Okay, so I'm gonna cut that part off here. We've gotten to the point where the code is mostly written, but we just don't know why it's not working on this, the actual hardware. In the next part, I'm going to hook up the logic analyzer and debug why it's not working and then actually make it work and copy it over into the actual program for the head so we can see it all working and see how much of a performance game we got. Uh, if I wouldn't split this up, the whole video would be about 50 minutes long. That's a little bit too long. So I'm just going to split it here. And uh, next time we'll wrap this pro part of the project up. But uh, until then, like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Thanks for watching.